Hello, my name is Liz Suter. I'm an assistant professor of environmental sciences. And today I'm recording this video to show you a run through of an example CHIME 2 pipeline for analyzing 16S amplicons. This particular tutorial is posted on the BBCN GitHub and it's lesson 3A of the amplicons channel. So that all of the details of the tutorial are there. I will also make the notebook that I generate today with full annotations available uh, through the BBCN network as well. Um, so if you're following along on this, hopefully you have done the pre-requirements for this lesson, which are to have either an installation of Chime 2 or to have a Cyverse account and be able to set up the Chime 2 instance or the Chime 2 app in the discovery environment. Um, and if you have trouble or if you need help with that, there's a separate lesson and associated video to help with that. Um, this lesson is based on an existing tutorial from Happy Belly Bioinformatics uh, that uses uh, Data2 and implements that in R in order, in order to draw ASVs from a data set. So we're using the same data set here. We're going to try to implement the same parameters um, and we're also going to try to use Data2, but it's going to be implemented in Chime2 instead of directly in R. So, um, like I said, this tutorial is already online in a README file, so I'll share those links, but I'll also share the notebook that I generate today. So, if you followed along on Cyverse, you're probably in an environment that looks like this. So, we have a Python 3 notebook, which has particular tools set up in it already for using Chime 2. I, when I set this up in the other video, I directed the discovery environment to open up a folder that I called BBCN because I have data files in there. Um, and then also, if you're in the Cyverse environment, you have to make sure that you initialized your connection with the data store and you do that in this little window here and that's explained in the other video as well. So um, what I'm going to do is going to open the BBCN folder and then I'm going to launch a Python 3 notebook and that's where we're going to do our analyses. So the first thing you probably want to do is name this. You can just rename it just like you're working in a normal file system. Let's call it Happy Belly Demo. Um, and so now that's located in our BBCN folder. <clears throat> and navigating a Jupyter Notebook, so there's more details and other links throughout the BBCN website, but just really briefly, um, you have different cells where you can implement code. So if I wanted to run a line of code that just lists the files in our file system, it will show you what's there. So this current notebook is located within the BBCN folder and the current files that are located in that same level are this notebook and a folder called Chime2WD, which is where my FASTQ files are. So LS in this case is a Python command because we're in a Python notebook. But like I mentioned in the other tutorial, you can call bash commands in the Python environment by using an exclamation point. So now bash has the same command, ls, and it's showing us the same results, but that was actually implemented in bash rather than Python. And then the other important thing that you want to um, recognize in Cyverse is that you're kind of working in two locations right now. So we have this temporary environment that uh, where we're using our notebook and we're generating files and we're using input data, but then we have a more permanent place called the data store. Um, and I connected to that in previous, in the previous video using Cyberduck. And you want to make sure that you also have that initialized in this environment. And in order to talk with the files in that location, I use something called I commands. So I commands also need to be implemented in bash. So we have the exclamation point, and then they essentially have an I in front of them. So we'll do ILS, and that will show us the files that exist in my eSuter folder on the data store. So you can see I have the BBCN also, which is basically replicated here, but then I have some other folders that I've been working on, including my analysis folder. Okay, so um, the other neat thing about Jupyter Notebooks is that you can make markdown cells, so a notebook can be code integrated with annotations. So when I'm using a markdown cell, I wanna say this is a markdown cell. And now it just appears as plain text. So 
um, after this video, I'm going to post my fully annotated Chime 2 um, pipeline in the notebook in this format so you can see all the details of what we're working on. One more thing I want to point out is if you go to the tutorial, the workflow of this pipeline is listed here. So this is generally pretty common for Chime 2 pipelines. Um, I guess you can you might see some examples where some of the steps are switched around a little bit, but we have some setup steps. We have to import our FASCU files into format for Chime 2. Then we remove primers, um, and that you might also have different adapters that you want to remove. You can check the quality of your trimmed sequences. Then um, I'm going to implement data 2 in this case, and that in Chime 2 is one step that does all of these things. Um, so it, tri it takes out low quality reads, denoises it, it generates an error model, um, which is important for calling the ASVs, it dereplicates. So if we have more than one sequence um, of, that are identical, it essentially retains one of those. And the counts, it still remembers the count of how many there were, uh, removes chimeras, it merges paired reads, infers the ASVs, and then generates our count table all in one step in Chime 2. So if you look through the happy belly analysis, you might see that it's actually multiple steps in R, which is fine. We can try to implement a lot of the same parameters. Then we take our representative sequences and assign them a taxonomy. In this case, we're using a Silva database. Uh, we generate a phylogenetic tree and there's multiple ways of doing that. In this tutorial, I'm kind of using the easy, quick way to do that, but um, I'll explain that a little bit later and export the data from Chime 2 format into a format where we can use it for downstream analysis and save them to the data store. So this is quite a long tutorial and uh, several of these steps actually take a while to run. They're computationally heavy, which is one benefit of working in cyber. So you don't necessarily, if you don't have the um, space to run them on the computer, you don't have to, or if you don't have uh, access to a supercomputer, you can use the cyber space um, but that also means that I'll be starting starting and stopping this tutorial several times. So let me go back to my notebook. So the first thing I want to do here, and I recommend this, is make a directory, and I'm just going to call it work, where I'm going to put all of my analysis um, files into. And this is helpful because later when we pull our results from this temporary environment, um, into the data store, we can just pull this one entire folder. We don't have to worry about doing individual files. So this environment already has Chime installed, so we can check that. And again, anytime you call Chime command, you have to use bash. So in this environment, because it's Python, we have to use the exclamation point. So it tells us which release of Chime 2 we're using, which is the 2019.10. This is not the most recent version of Chime 2. I think there's a 2020 uh, 2 from February. Um, so uh, the most recent version of Chime 2 is actually not yet available as an instance on Cyverse, but as soon as that becomes available, I'm sure it'll be very usable. And then it also tells us what version of Python we're using and then which versions of the various tools within um, Chime 2 that we're using. So for example, we'll be depending on on cutadapt and data2. So in case you need these versions later on, now they're forever in my notebook. So I will have a copy of that and I'll know next time I go and look at the annotations on my notebook what version of these tools I was using. Um, another thing I want to do here is import the Python tool that lets us embed Chime 2 visualizations into this Jupyter notebook. So if you're following along in a local installation, you will, won't necessarily be able to use this, but this is another benefit of using the Chime 2 tools within Cyverse because they have the installation for Chime 2 and they also have this really neat tool that lets us put interactive plots within our Jupyter Notebook as we're analyzing the Chime data. So that, again, is a Python tool, so we don't need the exclamation point, and it's called import, or we're gonna import it, it's called Chime 2. And I'm just going to give it a nickname, Q2. So now whenever I want to use it, I call Q2 instead of Chime2. OK, so those are sort of the initial setup steps. Now we're actually going to uh, jump into the overall workflow. So the first thing you need to do, whether you're working on Cyverse or locally on a Chime2 installation or some other supercomputer, 
is import the FASTQ files into the CHIME2 format. So it's important that these files have a specific name that CHIME2 expects, and there's a lot of documentation on that on the CHIME2 website. I also put a page together where I changed, I took the files from Happy Valley and I changed the name according to what CHIME2 expects. So you can take a look at that if you're interested. If not, you can, um, sometimes files come directly from the sequencing facility with the correct names for CHIME2, so that makes life easy. Um, so the name of that CHIME um, tool is called import. So again, we need a bash command. We're going to do CHIME tools import. And then we're going to tell it some specifics. So um, first of all, in Python, if I want to indicate that my, um, or sorry, in bash, if I want to indicate that my line is continuing on the next, that my command is continuing on the next line, so this is not a hard return. I put this little um, slash. Then chimes uh, it expects some parameters. So first, it wants to know the data type. Um, this should look like that. And then I'm actually going to copy this over from here. So I will put a link as to what the different data types are that Chime 2 might expect. Um, but the files that we're using are paired end files with quality scores. Then I also want to tell it the input path. So my FASTQ files are actually in this CHIME2 folder, CHIME2WD folder. Um, and they're in a subfolder called CHIME import. Uh, the format of those files, so input format. And the closest one, or the way that I modified these names to match, is something called Cassava 1.8 single lane per sample dir format. You can check out the documentation to see which one best matches um, your input files. And then output path. So I'm going to make uh, my results. I want to put everything in my work folder. And we have to give it a name um, and the extension of that file name will have to be in chime format and that extension is QZA. So I'm going to call it dmux for dmultiplex paired dot QZA. Hopefully that works. Aha, it didn't work because I misspelled output. And I should have known that because the color didn't change. Output path. Let's copy this directly in case. OK, so it says imported chime to chime import as cassava, so, so, so on. So it should be there if we check over here in our work. Yeah, there's a file there. So that's good. So now we are working with this file in Chime 2 format. Um, one thing is I'm going to go up here and actually annotate a little bit to show you uh, how this is kind of helpful. So I'm going to put a markdown cell in here and just say this step was importing. The next step that I'm going to do, so this will be another markdown cell, will be removing the primers. And let's put another couple of cells there. Okay. So for removing the primers, I want to try to do this as close to um, Happy Belly. So I'm using the same exact parameters that was used in that in that analysis. So Chime has the same tool that uh, you can use in R as well. It's called Cut Adapt for trimming primers. Um, the syntax is a little bit different, and so you you input the different primer um, 
the different parameters for the tool a little bit differently, but we can replicate that as closely as possible. So first, what I recommend you might want to do is read a little bit about the tool within Chime, and you can do that by just calling it. So it's called Cut Adapt, right? So if we say it's Chime Cut Adapt, it's very slow. It'll tell you a bit about the tool. So this uses Cut Adapt to work with adapters in sequence data. It gives you a link. Um, for more information and user support, and then it has um, different commands that you can use. So we have um, paired end reads that have um, already been demultiplexed. So we're gonna use the trim paired command. So I'm gonna go back up here and say trim, pa trim paired, and it's gonna tell us a little more information. So in the trim paired option, this is searching for demultiplex paired end sequences for adapters and removing them. Now there's different parameters we can put in. The, it needs an input, which is the um, demultiplex sequences, which we just imported to Chime. It wants to know some other things like, what is the sequence of the adapters? Um, are they on the forward reads, on the reverse reads? Um, are they possibly anywhere? You can also tell it how many cores, CPU cores to use. <clears throat> um, there's also some things here like minimum length. So you might want to throw out certain reads if they're shorter than a, a specific value. So if you look through what the uh, Happy Belly tutorial did, I'm going to try to replicate those as much as possible. So first, I want to tell it these input sequences. So I'm actually even just going to copy this here. Oh, on that first line, we need our slash. So the input um, sequences are in the Chime 2 WD folder. Or sorry, no, we just imported them. They're in the work folder. They're in work. And let's see if this is doing the autofill for us. It's not really, but it might be because my internet connection is super slow. Oh, there it goes. So they were named demux paired.qza. So I was doing the autofill by pressing tab there. Okay, another backslash. So that's our input sequences. I also want to tell it how many cores. And what's kind of neat about this is the default number of cores is one. So if I don't tell it to use multiple cores, it's just going to use one. But we're working in Cyverse, and I um, launched this analysis with eight cores, so we might as well use them all because it will hopefully speed up our analysis. So that's hyphen hyphen p hyphen cores, and I'm going to tell it eight. The next line that I want to add is this one, the sequence of the adapter ligated to the five prime end. And this I'm getting directly from Happy Belly, and I'm actually going to copy it so I don't mess it up. So obviously you want to use your specific primers. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually going to copy the next three lines. So again, these are all sequences that we're trimming. Um, so if you read through the Happy Belly documentation, this explains this really well. But essentially what we're doing is on the forward reads, we are trimming the, uh, the five prime end for the forward primer. And then we're trimming the free prime end for the reverse complement of the reverse primer because Theoretically, the primer should be on both ends, but on the, the three prime end should be the reverse complement of the reverse primer. And then on the reverse reads, we're trimming the reverse uh, primer and then the reverse complement of the forward primer. So that's what all of those sequences are. We also want to say the minimum length of sequences should not be less than 215. 
215 base pairs. See this, this command says discard reads shorter than specified value. Um, if there are sequences that don't get trimmed, they in happy in the happy belly analysis they threw those out so we're going to do that too discard reads in which no adapter was found because that could just be some noise that we're not interested in and that option looks like this and then we also need to tell it where to put our um, trim files so that is this parameter And again, I want to put that in my work folder somewhere so that I don't lose it later when I download all of my generated files. And I'm going to call it something very similar to the original, DMUX paired, but I'm going to call it DMUX paired and trimmed. DMUX paired and trimmed. And then this is still a chime file, so it's a QPA. And this step could take a few minutes, even if you're working with multiple cores. So hold tight. OK, so running that on eight cores actually was fairly fast, took less than like two or three minutes, uh, which is much faster than when I did this on my computer. So that's great. Um, another thing that I didn't mention when I ran this is that one of the options that you can put is verbose. And that will output the results of this um, trimming step and you'll be able to see that for each FASTQ file what percentage of the sequences were trimmed and how many were thrown out based on these parameters like minimum length. Um, for this I did not put that option because it'll make the notebook really messy but if you're trying this on a new data set you should definitely check out those files and make sure that uh, this is functioning correctly. Okay so we have trim files and the next thing I want to do is check the quality. This is a markdown cell. Check the quality of trim reads. Um, and we're going to do this with a chime um, tool called summarize. So chime demux summarize because we have, we're telling it that we have um, paired files again. So it will know basically which files match to which in terms of forward and reverse. Uh, I also have to tell it in this case which files I actually want to summarize. So that would be the ones we just generated. So that our input file is that demux paired and trim. And in Chime, when you want to make a visualization, you have to generate a Chime visualization file called a QZV file. So I'm putting that QZV file again in our work folder. Run that. OK, so what's kind of neat is there's multiple ways of viewing that folder, or excuse me, that file, that QZV file. One is that Chime actually has this website where you can drag and drop the files. So if you're um, generating the file on your desktop, you can literally drag the file into this little window and view it in the Chime website. If you're working in Cyverse, you can do the same thing, but the there's one additional step. You actually have to download the file first to your local environment, and then you can upload it to the Chime to view website. But essentially, you can drag and drop files here and, and look at them directly um, in this HTML window. Um, another thing you can do, and I actually have not tried this here. But if you're working locally in a terminal, this is the tool you would want to use to generate to take a look at your visualization. You want the Chime tool view. Chime tools view and then put the name of this file. Let's see if this works in this Jupyter environment. No. Okay, so that should work if you're working in a terminal, but the whole point of, uh, well, one of the major uh, 
reasons why I wanted to use this environment is because it actually embeds the images within the notebook. And remember we uploaded or we um, imported that Python tool to do that and we called it Q2. So this is not a bash command. So I'm gonna use Q2 and it's within the Q2 um, plugin. It's called visualization load. Um, and then within brackets and within uh, quotes, we're going to put the name of that full, that uh, file. Oh, I misspelled visualization. Okay, so this is the really cool thing about this notebook is that those results now are embedded here. And we can look at um, how those trim sequences look. So let's actually go to the interactive quality plot. So here's the quality score um, and their distribution over the sequence base. So you can see towards the end of the sequences, the quality tends to drop off, which is pretty normal. That's for the forward reads. And this is for the reverse reads and the reverse reads in general are always lower quality than forward reads. And if this is an interactive plot, so you can see as I scan through here, it's telling me some specific statistics about that sequence base position. So that's pretty cool. You would see the same thing in the Chime 2 view window, or if you were um, generating this interactive plot on your desktop, but I just like the fact that it's now within my notebook for this analysis. Um, and there's a lot of other statistics here. So when you're first doing an analysis, you definitely want to check out all of those, make sure things look like they make sense. So we have our trimmed reads. Um, they, so if we're following along with the happy belly, our next step is literally to just call data two. So like I said, when I was going over the workflow, data two actually performs multiple steps in one everything from um, denoising, removing chimeras, to generating the error model and uh, generating the ASV table. So within Chime, that first let's make a markdown cell called data2 to indicate that that's our next step. Oh, markdown, and then we're going to call the data2 to tool in Chime, and that is called data2. So if I just run this, it will tell us what types of input data2 takes. So the first thing we need to figure out is which of these three we want. Do we want denoise paired, denoise pyro, denoise single? So we're not working with pyro sequences, um, and we have paired ends, so we're going to use the denoise paired option. So after data two, I'm going to say denoise paired. And now it's going to tell us more about what types of input parameters we need to put. Okay, so the input needs to be demultiplex sequences, which we generated in a previous step, or we have in a previous step, and they're also trimmed. Um, and then we need to put some parameters about where we're going to truncate the reads. So in Happy Belly, for example, they truncated uh, based on these quality uh, figures up here. Let's see if I can scroll up again. You can see that the quality for the forward reads really drops off after about 200, and the quality for the reverse reads really drop, uh, sorry, for the forward reads they trim them at 250. So I think uh, they were going for a quality score of less than 20 is something that we really don't want. So everything after a length of 250 was bad for the forward reads and everything after a length of about 200 for the reverse reads, we wanted to trim off. So we can put those parameters directly in the data to the data to um, tool using P trunk length and for the forward and for the reverse, F and R. So I'll put those in. Um, another parameter that is here, let's see. Okay. 
P trunk Q. Um, so this is used to truncate reads as soon as a quality score less than or equal to a certain value um, is seen by the algorithm. So in Happy Belly, they assign this a number of two. If you see here, our, the default number is two. So we don't even have to um, assign this particular parameter. So we're going to leave that alone. Another thing that they do in Happy Belly is um, they set a, a certain expected number of errors. So if a read has a higher than that number, it gets thrown out. And in Happy Belly, they set this as two. So if a, a forward read has more than two hours, it gets thrown out. And if the reverse read has more than two hours, it gets thrown out. Here, the default is two. So I'm also not even going to call those parameters. I'm just going to let this tool do its business without changing that. But if I wanted to change that, we could do it with that parameter. Um, something else I'm going to do is I have to tell it, or it's, it's going to check for chimeras. So um, in, in Happy Belly, this was a separate step on its own. Here I'm building it into this step and we can, um, we can change the method that it uses here. I'm just gonna use a default called consensus, but if you were doing this analysis for the first time, you might wanna play around with consensus versus pools and read up a little bit on the differences between those. I also am going to put the number of threads here. So the number of threads used for multi-threading processes, I'm going to put zero so that this maxes out the my allotted com computational um, power that I have in Cyverse, and that will hopefully also speed up the analysis. And uh, something else that is set in Happy Belly is the number of reads to use when training the error model. So we're going to use the default number here as well. And I think that's about all that I'm going to put in this line. So let's continue with this cell. So parameters are our input is going to be our DMUX uh, paired and trim sequences in QZA format. We're going to trim all forward reads at 250. And we're going to trim all reverse reads at 200. I, again, I'm going to put the number of threads as zero, so we can use all of our allotted computational space. Um, and then I'm going to put this in a folder within my working folder, so that we're going to call this, instead of output path, we're going to say output directory. So we're going to put a new folder within work, and I'm going to call it data2 denoising output. Um, one more option here, like in the previous step, is that you can put verbose, and this will show you my internet again. One neat thing about Cyverse is if you do have unstable internet, um, very rarely it actually loses your work. But anyway, occasionally you might want to download this notebook just to have a copy of it in case you do um, lose it. But I happen to have any serious issues. So uh, verbo verbose in this command will tell you what um, the results basically of the data too. So this step takes a while. I mean, we are working with a shorter data set than the original data set here. And even then, I think this took about um, 20 minutes. So I'm going to run this line and pause the video for now. Okay, so we ran the data two step, and actually in Cyverse, that didn't take super long. It was less than 10 minutes. Um, <clears throat> and we see that uh, because we did the verbose option, we see some um, details here. And it tells us how many bases it used, or um, yeah, how many bases it used to generate the error model. Um, and as it was running, it was telling me when it was denoising, when it was removing chimeras, and so on. And it also generates three output files, a table.qza, a representative sequences.qza, and a denoising stats.qza. So we're going to take a look at each of those. So for each of those, we need to use the chime um, 
tools to um, turn those into visualization objects. And then we're going to use that Python tool in order to visualize the visualization object in the notebook. So first, let's take a look at the denoising stats. Um, that tool is called Chime Metadata Tabulate. <clears throat> and as the input file, I'm going to put the denoising stats.qza. That parameter looks like this. And I'm going to generate the output file and call it uh, denoising stats.qzv. And that's going to go in the same uh, data to denoising output directory. So while that's running, I'll also start writing the line of code uh, for using the Python tool for visualization. So remember that's q2.visualization.load. And in parentheses and in quotes, we're going to look at this file here. Okay, my internet is being very slow, but I was able to run that visualization step and that's loading into my notebook. It's taking a little bit of time. So this is going to be the statistics of um, how our sequences look before and after denoising or essentially quality filtering. So um, for each sample, B1, B2, and so on, we, have, we see how many uh, sequences went in and how many we have after filtering. Um, and we also can see that number as a percent. So in this case, we had 93% past the filtering. Um, how many were denoised after that? And then how many were able to be merged from the forward and reverse reads? The percentage that were merged, percentage of those that were considered not chimeras and, is, and then retained. And this is the percentage of input non-chimerics. So after all of that um, trimming, quality filtering, merging, and then uh, removing chimeras, this is what percentage of our initial input reads remained. So in some cases, we had relatively high, like 75, uh, 80, 84 percent, and sometimes it was relatively low, 50 percent, or even 40 something percent. So I took a look. Um, and I compared these results to those from Happy Valley, and they're not too different. Um, in this case, we actually filtered a little bit more, and I believe that's because some of the parameters uh, I was not able to set, set. So if you are really interested in the details of comparing this analysis and the Happy Valley analysis, implementing data too in Chime does not give you as much flexibility as it does in R. So you can't set all the parameters. I, here, I could not set all the parameters that were set um, in Happy Valley. But anyway, the numbers were relatively close and I consider this conservative. So I'll continue with this. Um, so those are our denoising stats. We also want to take a look at the representative sequences. So those were those dereplicated sequences. So there, for each um, ASV, there's one sequence that was retained as the representative. It's the longest one of that group or I shouldn't say cluster because it's on OTU, but of that group of sequences that are exactly identical. And we can take a look at those in table format as well. In Chime, um, we call these um, table of sequences feature tables. So the Chime tool that I'm using now is called feature, ta feature table tabulate seeks. Tabulate seeks. And the input is going to be that representative sequences that came out of our data analysis, data two analysis. And the output is going to be a visualization file that I'm putting in the same folder. So run that. And then we are going to view it here directly in the notebook using the um, visualization tool. So I'm going to visualize this rep seeks.qzv. As soon as that is done running. 
each of these steps should only take a few minutes at most. Um, I believe it's being very slow because of my internet again. Okay, so when we look at our tabulated feature table, it gives you some stats about the length of the sequences, but it also gives you a table of the representative, the actual representative sequences for each ASV. So this is the ID of the ASVs. Um, this is the sequence length of the representative sequence, and this is its actual sequence. And what's really neat about these visualizations is if you uh, were interested in looking into some particular ASV for some reason, you could actually click on one of these and blast it. The third file that we want to take a look at is the table. So we need to convert that to a chime visualization object. So that chime is called, that chime tool is called uh, feature table summarize. And the input table will be our table.qza. And the output will be a visual, visualization object, which I will just call table.qzv. And we can also view that directly in the notebook as soon as it's done using the Q2 tool. Ah, see, I put an equal sign instead of a dash. Let's rerun that. Now I need this. Sorry, one more error. That should work now. Okay, so that is saved. And we'll put the name of that file directly in here. Okay, and this is essentially the frequency. So, um, sorry, this is telling us essentially how many uh, independent ASVs we have per sample and how uh, abundant they are. And I believe if we click on CSV, that would actually be our ASV table or our OTU table. We can. I also have some um, a part of this tutorial later where we can export that directly from a code cell, but you could do it using this interactive tool as well. So we have our major files now. What we want to do is take those representative sequences and find out their identity. So this step we're calling assign taxonomy. And I will do this in markdown. So um, for most 16S studies, you're going to be using Silva. Um, and you, so there's a version of Silva that we're going to use here is the version 132. This is not the latest version of the Silva database. I think it's actually up to 138 at this time. But it's, we're using this because these databases have to be um, classified in order to be compatible with this assignment tool in Chime. So the latest one to be classified is this version 132. And you can actually download it directly from the Chime website. So they took the Silva 132 database from the Silva people and they modified it into this um, format for a classifier in Chime. Um, and I'll put some links in the notebook about that and in the tutorial in case you wanted to read more about that or see where I'm getting these data from. But we're going to use uh, bash command w get in order to get that database. And I'm just going to copy the link from here, from the Chime2 website. And um, when I did this the first time, I was actually looking at the documentation for the latest version of Chime2, which is 2020.2. However, in this notebook, we're using, we're using um, the 2019.10 version. So you actually have to change this. It's 2019.10. 
in order to get the um, classifier that is compar compatible with this version of Charm. I'm also going to, um, well, let's run that. So this is essentially a download. Okay, and now I'm going to move it. So let's actually see where that is. It likely went to our BBCN folder. Yeah, so that file is in the BBCN folder. So actually, because I want to save this when I download all my work also, I'm going to move that file into the work folder. <clears throat> Again, this is a bash code. So I'm gonna use the bash tool move. We're gonna move that silva.qza file into work. Okay. So next, we're gonna use a tool called the feature classifier. And before I actually use it, I'm going to call it so we can read about what it does. Feature classifier, classify SK learner. So this classifies reads by tax on using a fitted classifier. And we downloaded that fitted classifier based on the Silva 132. So it needs an input reads object and an input classifier object, and it basically an output um, directory, directory here for a path. So, and I'm gonna run this and I'm gonna run it as verbose so that we can see the output as it's running. So this step actually takes quite a while for me, for this particular analysis, this took the longest out of all the steps. It was about an hour running it on the Cyverse um, interface. And if you have a larger data set, which you likely do, uh, because this is a, a modified data set to be smaller, then it probably will take several hours. So we have our line already. I'm going to tell it our input classifier is that Silva classifier.qza our input reads are our representative sequences that QZA. Uh, we're going to put this in the work folder and I'm actually going to put it in a subfolder called classified sequences just to keep things neat. And lastly, I'm going to say verbose. So again, this will take a while. So I'm going to Pause the recording here. Okay, so we're back. That step uh, was running for a little while. I think it took about an hour uh, on the Cyverse infrastructure. So I came back here so we can see that it saved um, the taxonomy to our classified sequences folder. And so what I want to do next is visualize that output. So the first thing is to turn the QZA file that we generated in that step to the QZV file. And we do this with the metadata tabulate again. Oops. Metadata tabulate. And our input file is that QZA file, which I will just copy and paste here. And the output is a visualization QZV file that I am just going to call taxonomy. Oops, run that. And we can use the Python tool to view it when it's done running. Visualization.load. And uh, so this is in work slash classified sequences and it's called taxonomy.qzv. So let's, oops, extra quotes. Oh. 
But with all of these interactive plots from Chime, as this is loading, you usually have a button where you can download them directly. So you, you could convert your TS file immediately. Um, but again, I'll do that in a later step. But here you can see what this is going to look like. So on um, the first column is our feature IDs. So these are the IDs associated with each unique ASV and the taxonomy based on the Silva 132 database is on the right here. So that first one is in the actinobacteria and what looks like micrococcales. Okay, so we have taxonomy, we have our OTU count data. Um, next, you might want you might have a need for a phylogenetic tree, which Chime also does. And you might need this. Maybe you want the tree for visualization purposes, or maybe you um, want it for downstream analysis purposes. So uh, like statistical things like uh, Unifrac will require phylogenetic distances based on a tree file. So we can create that tree file using Chime. Um, so I'm going to check where I am really quickly. Okay, so I'm going to make a new directory within my work folder called phylogeny. Um, and I'm going to put a few links in the tutorial. So there's a few different ways of making multiple sequence alignment in Chime. The, the, the approach that Chime uses is called MAPT. And there's a lot of documentation. There's a paper associated with that. So I'll put a link to that. But we're going to call that tool Chime Alignment MAFFT. And our input is going to be our representative sequences. And so, um, and the output is going to be an alignment. So we're going to call that aligned representative sequences. Once uh, the alignment is made, let's make sure that worked. Oh, I know. This is not in work. Work slash data. And we're going to also put the output in the work folder too. And this is still representative sequences. That hopefully will work now. So once this is aligned, there's a, the next step is to mask the alignment, and this reduces ambiguity in the alignment. Um, and I'll also include a link to a better description of that from the Chime website. I'll start typing that out, hopefully, by the time the, yep, okay. So we've saved our aligned repseeks.qza. Now we are going to do the, um, the mask step. So Chime alignment mask. Um, so our input is the aligned sequences that we just made. Our output is going to be something we're call I'm calling masked aligned rep seeks. And again, let's make sure that's in work slash phylogeny, work slash phylogeny. The next step is actually constructing the tree from the alignment. So there's multiple ways of doing this in Chime. There's several options. Um, I think one of the more common ones is fast tree, and it's also one of the faster ones. So I'm going to use that here. But there are more than just fast tree, so you can read about that on the Chime website as well. Okay, that's saved. So next, Chime. Phylogeny, oops, fast tree. If I just run Chime Phylogeny, it might tell us about the different tree building options. Okay, so there's a fast tree option, which is the one I'm going to use. There's a method called IQ tree, and there's a RaxML method. Um, so you can pick the one that's most appropriate for you. Like I said, I'm going to do fast tree. Use. And my input will be a tree, or excuse me, my input will be the alignment that we just made. 
an output will be a tree. Make sure that's in work again. Work. And the last step for building the tree is in, uh, rooting the tree. You need to have a rooted tree in order to use it for Unicrack. Um, Chime roots trees at a midpoint. So we'll just run that command in a moment. I can start typing it now. So we're still using the phylogeny suite of tools, but we're calling the tool midpoint root. And our input file will be a tree file, the one that we generate in the step that's running, as long as that's successful. And the output will be a rooted tree. I'm going to call it fast tree rooted. Make sure that's going into work slash phylogeny. Work slash phylogeny. OK, so that line above completed successfully so we can run this. So while that's running, I will mention that all of these steps in the tree building section here, so the alignment, the masking, the building of the tree, and the midpoint rooting, that can all of these options that I picked can be run with one command um, called align to tree map fast tree. And I will put that in the complete tutorial as well. So because most people end up using um, this, this pipeline for building a tree, so they use the fast tree, um, they use the mapped, and they're not usually aligning to a known tree. So because this is sort of like the most popular set of four options for building a tree, they've built it into one um, algorithm that you can run, and that's called, again, align to tree, mapped, fast tree. So you could have just run that instead of these four steps. But anyway, we have our file now, fast tree rooted. Um, okay, so that's, I've generated all the files that I need now. Um, but they're all in chime format. They all in, end in .qza. So we want to be able to export them so that we can use them downstream um, in R, for example. So we'll make this section called export. Um, and I'm going to make a directory called export as well, work slash export. So we're going to put all our files in there. And OK, so the first one that we should export is the count table, our ASV counts. So this has the ASV ID in the first column. Um, and then for each sample going across the columns, it has their counts in each respective cell. So that was in our, we generated that file in the data2 step. So it's in the data2 denoising output folder. And it, I called it table.qza. So I'm going to call chime tools export. Um, and my import, uh, my input path will be work slash data to denoising output slash table.qza. And the export path, I'm going to put it in the export folder, work slash export, and just call it table. So the default um, file uh, type for, the, for this file is actually a biome format, B-I-O-M format. Um, so that can be used in things like PhiloSeq, but maybe you just want a raw TSV file for playing around in R uh, a little bit. So you can also export that. There's a tool in Chime called Biome Convert. Um, so we will convert our feature table in Biome format to a TSV file. And that's also in the work folder. So for one, one second, so I'm going to take a look in the export folder, in the table folder within that. See, our feature table was exported as a biome um, file, biome, biome. 
So uh, this step is going to convert that to a TSV. So we'll have both in the export folder. So that's the feature table. As soon as that's completed running, we should see it appear over here. The next thing we want to do is get our sequences, our FASTA file of our representative sequences. So we still use the Chime Tools export tool. And now we're going to grab that representative sequences, that QZA file. And the output will be a FASTA file that's going to go into the export folder. Oh, see that table.csv appeared. So that should deposit our FASTA file into the export folder. We can take a look at this table.csv in Jupyter Labs just to see what it looks like. It's going to take a moment. Um, this is a TSV file, so if you look at it in R or in Excel, it'll appear a little bit nicer. But you can see all of the feature IDs are there, the samples going across here, and their counts in each respective um, cell. We also exported the um, representative sequences FASTA file, so that should be in here. And you can see that DNA sequences.fasta is there. So now we have basically two files. We have our FASTA file with the sequences and we have the count table. Um, we also generated taxonomy for each of those unique ASVs and we can export that as well. So if we do Chime Tools export, oops, actually I can just copy from here. Chime Tools export and our input will be that classification, that QZA file that I generated when I classified sequences. And the output will just put in a directory called taxonomy. These are, again, both in New York slash. And while that's running, I'll also start writing the line for exporting the tree file. Chime tools export. OK. Uh, Still working. Okay, and then let's run that line to export the tree file. So that should also appear in our export folder once it's done running. The last thing I want to do since we are in the Cyverse environment is save all of these files that I generated, including the notebook that I'm working in. So you can do that in um, Cyverse or the Discovery environment using iPut or I. So one of the I commands that helps you interact with the data store is called I put. First, I'm just going to check where I am again. OK, so I have at the level where uh, the notebook is, I essentially have three files or directories. I have the chime2 underscore wd, which is my raw data files, which I already have in my data store, so I don't need to copy those over. But I do want to copy the um, notebook, and I want to copy everything in the work folder. So I can do that by using the bash command I put export. Uh, sorry, I'm going to I put my work folder. And I'm also going to put the option in front of work, in front of the name of the folder, dash R, which means recursive. So it's going to take the work folder and everything that's below that, all of the directories below that, and put that in my data store. And I'll run a separate line for putting the uh, notebook. I 
takes a few minutes to do this. Okay, so I ran both of those lines. So theoretically, those files should be in my data store. And if I go back to the discovery environment platform and check my data window, let's try again. In eSuiter, I see the folder work there. It's being slow again because of my internet, but it should get there eventually. Okay, so all of my data files are there, including the, um, the intermediate files that we generated in Chime format but probably the most important ones to us are what is present in the export folder here. So for example, our O2 table is in the table folder, and I think we called it table.csv, so it should be in there. So again, you, the CyberDuck app is the easiest way to upload and download files. You can do it from this platform, but it's, it tends to be much more finicky. So using CyberDuck, you can download entire folders like the entire work folder with all of your results, or if you just want the export folder, you could do that too. And that's it. So um, I also definitely recommend checking out the Happy Belly um, tutorial because that outlines in really clear details the reason why certain parameters were chosen. And I tried to replicate a lot of those here. I also explained them in the written tutorial for this, for the Chime 2 um, run through of this on the BBCN website. So you can check that out too. Um, and until next time.